from Apple acquiring AI companies at a faster clip than their peers to the CIA developing their own version of ChatGPT, here's all the AI headline news you need right now. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with an interesting story around Apple. Now, Apple is, of course, the big open question mark when it comes to big tech and generative AI. The company has clearly not been as willing as its peers to throw itself headlong into at least the buzziness of the gen AI space, but there are a lot of indications that they are doing more than perhaps they are letting on. Recently, for example, the information reported that Apple is spending millions of dollars a day now training AI models, even if they're not exactly sure what they're going to do with them. We've also gotten glimpses of how Apple might be thinking about implementing AI with recent product launches of the iPhone and the latest Apple Watch. The Apple Watch in particular uses a new chip with what they call a neural engine for better inference on device. Now they're using that to make gesture-based controls viable for operating the Apple Watch with a single hand, but the broader applications are, of course, AI models that can actually run on device without touching the cloud. Many have speculated that that will be the differentiation that Apple tries to seek, given their existing stance on privacy and user data. Now, yesterday we got a report from PitchBook, summed up by Quartz, which showed another indicator of how active Apple actually is in the AI and machine learning space, even if it's not being flashy about it. Since 2017, Apple has bought by a distinct amount more AI and ML companies than its peers like Microsoft and Google. In fact, since 2017, Apple has bought 21 AI startups. Next on the list is consulting giant Accenture with 19, but after that it's Microsoft at 12, Meta at 11, so in each case, just a little over half of what Apple has acquired, and Google's Alphabet is all the way down the list at just eight. Now, for now, Apple remains intransigent about talking about its AI strategy. Indeed, when asked on a conference call with investors and analysts in August why Apple was being so tight-lipped about its AI investments, CEO Tim Cook said, we tend to announce things as they come to market, and that's our MO, and I'd like to stick to that. Now, speaking of people bringing AI tools to market, it will surprise perhaps no one to find that the US CIA has built its own ChatGPT style AI tool with a specific eye to continue combating the rise of China. Basically, the CIA has something called the Open Source Enterprise Division, and they're planning to provide all 18 US intelligence agencies with a ChatGPT style tool that can sift through huge, huge volumes of public information and answer questions in a conversational way. Randy Nixon, who leads that division, said, We've gone from newspapers and radio to newspapers and television, to newspapers and cable television, to basic internet, to big data, and it just keeps going. We have to find needles in the needle field. Now, obviously, anyone who's used ChatGPT can see why this would be an appealing use case. What ultimately is an LLM like ChatGPT good at? Well, one, it's good at aggregating an incredible volume of information, and two, it's good at letting people use natural language to recall and better access more quickly that information. It's not hard to imagine the intelligence applications there. Now, some concerned observers have noted, however, that the CIA has not revealed what model will be used in training the tool, exactly what information will be available to it, or how it will protect that information from accidentally getting public. Darknet Diaries podcaster Jack Reisiter sums up the concern that I've seen on Twitter by saying, Okay, I'm confused. To find available data, does the CIA need a search warrant to search Twitter posts, or how about my SMSs? Are my tax records in this mess? At Just Matthew responds, Assume it means everything. Now, staying on this theme of the military use or the intelligence use case of AI, the news outlet Nikkei is reporting that the U.S. is preparing to pursue a U.N. resolution on international norms for how AI is used in weapon systems. Now, in terms of what will be included, we don't exactly have a lot of information yet. However, observers expect whatever finds its way into the resolution to be based on a document published in February by the State Department called Political Declaration on Responsible Military Use of Artificial Intelligence and Autonomy. That document includes a number of things such as using military AI in line with international humanitarian law, suggesting each country issue its own principles for using AI systems, calling for AI to be disabled if it starts to operate in unintended ways, and urging human involvement for any and all actions relating basically to anything with nuclear weapons. Now, one State Department diplomat said that the U.S. had actually been discussing the declaration not just with its traditional allies, but with a much wider range of companies, and said, quote, we've gotten a lot of positives. We've had comments on it and some ideas for changes to text, but we haven't had a lot of pushback. That same official, Bonnie Jenkins, said that when it came to engagement with Beijing in this area, that, quote, this is an area that we would like to work with China. Moving to a different dimension of artificial intelligence in the real world. Yesterday, we reported that there had been a tentative agreement reached between the Hollywood studios and the writers. And subsequent to that recording, we started to get a few more details about what the actual AI aspect of that deal would include. 
While we still don't have the exact language, it sounds like the writers walked away with a guarantee that they could receive credit and compensation for work they do on scripts, even if studios partially rely on AI tools, but that at the same time, Hollywood studios retained the right to train AI models based on writers' work. One person who didn't like the deal was IAC chair Barry Diller. CNBC writes, Barry Diller rips WGA deal with studios, says fair use needs to be refined, saying it doesn't do enough to address the AI threat. Appearing on CNBC's Squawk Box, Diller said, Fair use needs to be redefined because what they have done is sucked up everything and that violates the basis of copyright law. All we want to do is establish that there is no such thing as fair use for AI, which gives us standing. Now, when it came to this deal, he said, They spent months trying to craft words to protect writers from AI, and they ended up with a paragraph that protected nothing from no one. So there will be a lot to continue to watch in this situation as it evolves. In the world of enterprise AI, enterprise giant SAP has launched their own AI assistant called Joule. The play here is what we've talked about innumerable times on this show, a company that has extensive enterprise relationships and customers already, plugging AI into the existing apps and services that those customers already use. One of the big questions for me remains whether when it comes to these enterprise tools, there will become a dominant standard, or whether the chatbots and the LLMs that underpin them will become eventually totally commodified, and companies will just use whatever service providers they already used and had existing data relationships with. As we start to round out the show, one other update from a story earlier this week. We talked a bunch about Spotify's AI tools for podcast translation, but what we didn't mention is that in a recent BBC interview, Spotify's CEO Daniel Ek had said that Spotify had changed its opinion a little bit and was trying to take a more nuanced approach that stopped short of completely banning AI music. Ek basically said that there are valid uses of AI in music that should be allowed, but that where to draw those lines was going to be, quote, tricky. Ek said we have a very large team that is working on exactly these types of issues. It seems clear to me that when it comes to music creation, there has to be some amount of give here. And I think that the most likely scenario is basically sanctioned whitelisted assets in the form of specific music that people can train models on that gives the bedroom creators the ability to do what they were going to do anyway, but actually cutting the artists and the labels in on the deal. On the AI copyright front, it looks like we are about to get a jury trial around the Thomson Reuters AI dispute. Writes Reuters, quote, A jury must decide the outcome of a lawsuit by information services company Thomson Reuters accusing Ross Intelligence of unlawfully copying content from its legal research platform Westlaw to train a competing artificial intelligence-based platform. Now, of course, there are numerous other AI model training-related lawsuits out there, but this could be the first one to come to a trial. Anyways, guys, another busy day in the world of AI. There were so many things that I didn't even get to in this. Stick around, because coming up next, we have a look at all of the news around OpenAI, including a big potential fundraise, a collaboration with the creator of the iPod, and much, much more. 